standing up and talking about identity issues or their background issues or wherever their viewpoints are, I do like, I have so much empathy because I'm like, I, you're broken yeah. and you're lost and everybody keeps pushing you to the hell's fire and no one's giving you any like real love. Like when you, I'll give you an example of friends. Like if you have friends that are always telling you, Candace, dude, you're killing it, bro. Like the way you punched that little kid in the face, dog, he deserved it. You're like, no, you should probably tell him like, hey dude, I love what you said, but you shouldn't punch that kid in the face. You have to have somebody give you the real shit. Like you shouldn't do that. And I feel like now because of the media, especially with the algorithm, they're only feeding things for your ego. Mm. And it's causing a separation. So mm. how do we teach them out of love? Because I feel like the separation is like us, like really never being able to see it from their point of view. Mm. I see, I, I disagree with that, I would have to say. I disagree with the premise. I don't think that it's not seeing things from their point of view. I think actually the entire world is bending down to see things from their point of view. Like we okay. can't even misgender someone on YouTube. Seeing things from them point of view is being blared out. Cultural messaging, no matter how they feel, they have to be affirmed, right? Yeah. That is actually the culture. They're being affirmed in the classrooms. That's why they're bratty. Yeah. It's actually we're suffering from <laughs> too much love, yeah. too much coddling, too much with their hand being held. So if, if the pendulum is going to swing back, it needs to be with more aggression, in my view, right? If you're going to yeah. even that out, they need a moment that just smacks them in the face and it's, you're not that special. You're actually not that special. N nothing about your life to me is enviable. You're not going to use words to try to silence conversation by calling this homophobia. There's so many different words. This is sexism, chauvinism, this is homophobia, feminism, whatever it is. So yeah, I, I, I very much disagree with the premise that these people need love. I think it's, what's been happening is that they have the wrong idea of what love is. And in my view, love is discipline. Love is discipline. I think it's important because you want people to do well in life. And so the people that are affirming them, like you just said, yeah. are setting them down a path of absolute failure. This is why these kids end up, they come out of college, they have a useless degree in gender studies, and they're, they don't even know who, who to be angry at when they can't get a job. And so they blame the white man, the rich man, the tall man. Yeah. It's because of racial prejudice. It's because women can't get, it's no, it's because literally you have done nothing of value in your life. Nothing in value at all, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The world lied to you, the teachers lied to you, your mom lied to you, your dad lied to you. So I'm just gonna stand up here and be the truth. Hey, oh, Candace. Um, she was telling the truth. What, you can't okay, say so that what do you don't have value in your life, though. <laughs> you, say, you can't say that. What do you think? God doesn't say that. Oh, you about to go to another? No, 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 <laughs> go. What do you think? Hey, sure. What? Uh, oh, because of what I said? I said she would tell the truth because I feel like at times, sometimes when, when, when you have people that, when you're looking at younger people at sometimes and you see the bad decisions they're making is because it starts in the home. And if you're not giving discipline to people and you're not telling them the truth, you're just letting them go by, once they leave your house, they're going to go to college. And then once they mm -hmm. leave college, they're going to go into the workplace. And once they go into the workplace, you're going to have to deal with them. Mm -hmm. And you as a manager or whatever, you have to deal with those people I, I, I've seen that firsthand when you at a job and, and young people don't want to work and they look at you like, I ain't doing this. And you're like, <laughs> well, you got to go home. You know what I mean? And that's just being yeah. real. But yeah. that person, you could tell that person has been, they haven't really hit reality yet. Spoiled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying at the end part. That's okay. the part I'm talking about. What do you I'm think, Ryan, though? I'm just laughing. Um, I mean, I've heard this argument before about the gender studies part. Um, <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's a difference. Um, I, I was saying something one day about um, job hoppers, right? And I was saying, man, I just don't know if if I want to be that person, right? Like, and my and a person in my family was like, no, that's a good thing. People are not standing. People are not standing by and idly letting people tell them what their value is. They're going out and they're creating their value. Yeah. And so that's why I say you can't tell people that they don't have value because they have value from God's from God's uh, eye or lens alone. So that part to me is is offset. But um, I I'm just thinking like you know. There's so many different things that I think people can study and we look at it like, man, that might be pointless to me, but it may actually have some type of value or standard with them. Here's a question. When she's talking about value like you, value, you're not bringing value to the world. That's you're not what bringing, she means. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't think she's talking about you as a person. You don't person. have value. Yeah, yeah. But she, I think she was saying I mean, you don't bring value. I mean, it's the same thing, value. though. You do bring value to the world if you're purposed and fashioned by God in any, in any sense. So you do bring value. But, if you, but what happens if you, go some, if you go somewhere and you don't, 
add on to the company. You might not bring value to the job um, in the sense that your your studies are there, but you learn things that do bring value. Like, I mean, I've, I used to work for a company where we used to talk about how, you know, sitting in a classroom, people would say there's no value in that. And say there's plenty of value because you're not just getting one subject. You're getting plenty of subjects. You're learning discipline. You're learning, you know, um, how to sit up and listen. You're learning, you know, active listening. Like, there's so many different things you get out of that. Yeah. So you can't say it doesn't have value. It doesn't have um, value to you. Yeah. It may not have value that's, that's to the... That's what she's saying. It doesn't have... In her opinion, it, there's no value. Right, well, right, but you can't be that opinionated. Well, I've seen stuff where, like, I've seen something where Killer Mike was talking about, like, um, young people learn to trade because mm-hmm. the trade will keep you with money in your pocket versus right. just trying to do something that you like, I don't understand. And and what, and what and I guess what she's coming across as is, like, when you don't build to society, your society normally crumbles when you don't build. When when you have a bunch of people, a group of a group mm-hmm. of people not building to society, then that doesn't help that society. <laughs> yeah, but I, y'all t- so I the real question is, mm-hmm. are these the people that she's talking about are liberals? That's what she yeah, means, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the the point is is her as, uh, her assertion is that they're being loved too much. George was trying to say George is trying to say we need to learn to empathize with them more. Yeah, she said no, they're being loved too much. What do you think about that? I, I agree. I, yeah, I agree with her. Yeah, I think. That's interesting. You think car liver oil? You think castor oil? You think black seed oil? <laughs> you think sea moss? Like all these things are great for you, but when them moths go down, it's disgusting. But it's good for you. Like that's how I took her <laughs> message just now. It was like. That what she's saying is like we're calling people too much, we're lying to people, making them feel like everything is okay. But you're gonna go out into a real world, it's gonna swallow you and eat you alive if you don't have a real life perspective on how this is gonna work. You yeah. need a job that's gonna be able to make money long term. Yeah, that's right. You're gonna need to be able to take care of your family. You're gonna need to be able to make wise decisions and have uh, uh, communication skills and do these different things. But when you're living in your bubble and you just focus on the things that you feel like is important and you're not looking mm. at what's going on around you, it's like with this show. And we just said, hey, we're going to talk about the things that are just uh, only matter to us. We may have a small uh, subject matter of things that we actually care about, but people want to hear perspective on a wider a wider scope of things. Yeah, sure. So you have to be able to have range. You got to be, like Paul would say, I got to be all things to all men. You know what I'm saying? I'm not necessarily going to let these things tell me who I am, but I'm going to be so well-versed at any setting I go to, I can bring value to that setting. <laughs> but I think Jesus is both. <laughs> I think Jesus is that, both. That's where I was. I heading. think I think Jesus is like to show empathy to people, but then also tell them the truth. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. I think when you just tell the truth, tell the truth, people probably gonna be like, "Yeah, you saying the right things, but you sound like a jerk." That, that's, that's my only issue with Candace. Like, I prefer this version of Candace than the politics version. Sure. But I'll just say this: um, I agree. A lot of people are on Candace's side in here, but I agree with B plus. She may be right, but I never like her delivery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how yeah, I feel. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. God, it's the way like, she, why yeah, are you saying the tone it like that she uses. It's like so, I'm better than so you. How could so she I, want, say I, it? I just want to get back to the core yeah. question. Yeah. Somebody that's like, hey, affirm my my pronouns, or uh, you know, speak to me the way I need. You know, like you're, you're not considering me. You know, like yeah. you know those kind of people. Yeah. Are you saying that if, as a Christian, when you encounter somebody who's you know offended by the Word of God and yeah. they're you know like you know, all that stuff. Is your inclination to try to sit down and be like empathize with them and try to talk them through it, or is your inclination to say, mm. "Man, get over it, man. You're wrong." <laughs> like that seems like mm-hmm. the the choices we're having. Yeah. George was coming from a, I need to understand them more and figure out why they feel the way they feel, yeah. and, and Kansas is like, no. So you know, yeah. you know, I'm which a is right. You know, I'm a recruiter, right? So. I was uh, interviewing somebody one day and he was just like, um, yeah, he's like, I feel like I bring way more value and you need to pay me more for who I am. Jeez. And I was like, interview done. Like, this is rap. <laughs> and the manager saying the same thing, like, cut this dude off. We were on, we were on uh, Zoom. It's the entitlement. Yeah. And so I was watching this, uh, this came up on TikTok one day. Y'all probably saw this, or maybe we shared it in our chat or something. But there was a, a, a young person, um, transgender person, that was being interviewed on the news. And the person said their their gender wrong. And the whole art, the whole interview turned into, you said my, my pronouns wrong. And she was like, okay, well, I'm not asking you about your pronouns. I'm asking you, but like, why did you address me the wrong way? And so 
the whole argument the stemmed from the entitlement. <laughs> so, but, so, but as a Christian, what's yeah. your reaction to that? Should we be more like Candace, where it's like, get over yourself, it's no. not all about you, or should we be, I, I don't think George is really saying he's yeah. like this, but more like, okay, let me figure out why you feel that way. Let me talk to you, talk, talk you yeah, through yeah, it. Yeah. I think, and, and I think the reason I'm yeah. asking is because I think Jeremiah hit it. Jesus was able to kind of be both. Right? both. Mm-hmm. Yep. He, he, he was able to say some of the the roughest things I've ever yes. heard in my life to yes. like yeah. no you're like you're a dog why are you why yeah. are you you know what I'm saying yeah. 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 but also just to <laughs> lift lift somebody up that was being treated like that yeah. and and give them grace yeah. so it's like yeah. how do you I, I think some of us are not good at one or the other right yeah. you either too Candace yeah. right yeah. where mm-hmm. everything is just yeah. Yeah. or you're too like it's okay it's too okay passive. Yeah. You know, I understand do you, yeah. you know, how do you how do you how do you get the I think, middle of that right? I think because people's family are involved with yeah. this is that they're so passive that they're like no earthly good. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> almost. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to be so truthful that they don't want to hear from you because if they don't want to hear from you, then they may be like, if that's a Christian, I don't want to be a I Christian. I think it depends on the person you're talking to, the way they're approaching the situation. If you see they're like living a certain kind of way and they're more, they're more, they're not as aggressive. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to come like Candace mm-hmm. on somebody who's a little more passive, yeah. who may be yeah. more open to what you're saying. But and sometimes if somebody is like, like you're talking to an atheist or somebody or somebody who's really dogmatic about how they feel and they feel like they're just giving you facts on facts on facts. And sometimes you got to yeah, just hit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like with Christ, like when he was eating the grain in the field and they were like, you should be eating that. He didn't just go home. Yeah. He went to the temple right after that and yeah. said, and let me keep on letting y'all know how I feel. Yeah. Like he came, like he yeah. came at him and let him know, like, you know what I'm saying? But it was time, like Sean was saying, like yeah. where he was yeah. like gentle. So there was times where he was surprisingly gentle, and then there were times where he was surprisingly rough, like flipping yeah. tables yeah. over. Yeah. And it usually in in the way I remember is that he was usually rougher with the religious people yep. yeah. and yep. kinder with the sinners. Yep. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So like how how do we navigate now where so, everybody's kind of all of those things mixed up? So the, well, how do you, how do you, yeah. the best the conversation, you know? best conversation comes when permission is given and permission is granted because you have to kind of let somebody know, Hey, I want to correct you, but I want to do it in love. Are you open to the feedback? Are you open to the, like I had a conversation with a friend earlier and I was like, yo bro, I got a word from the Lord. I was like, but can I correct you? And he was like, give it to me straight. Give it to me straight. I say, I can correct you in love. I can correct, correct you, you know, from what the Lord told me to say. He was like, give it, me, give it to me both ways, however you want. Respect, you know? bro. It's just yeah. about respect to somebody. Yeah. Really. Everybody deserves yeah. respect, whether you agree with their way of life or not. I'm still going to approach you with a, with a manner of respect. That's right. You know? mm-hmm. That's what I think. Yeah, and, you, and I, you, I, think, yeah. I think to me, honestly, um, as much as you need that, 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 that people that who are – I ain't gonna say passive, but just people who are have a, a heart for people, and that's really like genuinely just loving them through the process. Mm. Versus the street preacher who's saying everybody going to hell. Mm. Honestly, you may you need both because the street preacher that's saying everybody going to hell, somebody out there like an atheist may be like, mm. "Yo, what is he talking about?" And they mm. may have a conversation that may need. He may need tough love. Yeah, I'm yeah. turned off by the street preacher. No, but what I'm saying <laughs> is sometimes some people need tough love, yeah, need and it, some yeah. other people just need to be loved through through it, a process. That's Jesus. why. That's why you need the Holy Spirit, the discernment to know this person needs to be told. Like I, I've seen my my old college pastor. There was a guy that was in our college group oh. that was a predator. Like he was preying on women. Like he was dating them and then doing stuff and oh, then wow. dumping them, dating another one. Doing. And my pastor had to get in his face like. Get out of here! Like straight up, no, no. Oh. Let's talk about your feelings yeah. and let's yeah. figure out why you. Yeah. No, it's like get out. Oh, yeah. It man. was like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you need to know when to be mm-hmm. hammer or you know what I'm saying, like yeah. the blanket. You know. So, so that's the thing. I don't think we always know which one to be, but there are certain situations. Like I think Ryan's right. You do need to be like, hey, you're going to go to hell if you keep doing this. Yeah. yeah. You don't mm-hmm. wake up. Yeah. Some some people do need to hear that. Yeah. yeah. This is true. Yeah. 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 When I was at. When I was in college, I had a professor who was um, who was uh, a pastor, you know. So, so I thought, you know, <laughs> and so one day we were walk- we have a strip at the AU Center, so we were walking down the strip, and we saw this guy from Morehouse with high heels on, 
And he started just yelling at the guy, like, get off the street. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and then he looked at me and he was like, why are you not going to say nothing? You're a man of God. Stand up for yourself. Say something. That's, that's Protect the, exact the kingdom. Situation. Which one and I you? was like, yeah. hmm. Like, that ain't the right way. That was the last time we had the conversation because I was like, I'm never speaking to him again. He <laughs> wasn't even my professor. But that's, a, that's another great situation. Yeah. Of, there are cer- certain people who would say, that's exactly what you should have done. And then yeah. there's certain people that are like, that's not the right way to approach that. Nah, that person man. will never get saved. You know what yeah, I mean? Because no. you just injured them with, yeah. Yeah. with the word he just of God. Flipped you know? the, the dude just flipped us off and kept going and was like, I mean, that wasn't, you didn't you didn't reach him at all. Yeah, it yeah. depends on who you're dealing with because like, like you said, you might have a situation like that. I've been doing outreach and like talk to murderers and it's like, they looking you dead in your eye. You can just tell, you know, it's just a different vibe. You know what I'm saying? And you just, hey, they just want to hear raw. Like, look, like yeah, you said, tell me, bro, you going to hell. It ain't no way around it. Yeah. You, you, you get right now. You don't know how much longer you're going to be here. The lifestyle you live in is over with. And if you would have been gentle with him, you would have lost him. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Man, but you, you got to know who is who. But yeah. I think yeah. that's the power of the Holy Spirit and discernment and yeah. wisdom. And when he, and when I, I think you said the story a couple weeks ago about you was in the outreach and you saw somebody come up try to disturb yeah. it. And I had to be rough with that. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was mm-hmm. discernment. God put on your heart to be like, say this, Sean. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Or give him that because that's what he needed. And I think that's the power of God. Like when, when and you're in situations and of course praying before a situation, y'all, you do outreach or whatever you do, but God's power will get but, you in those situations to help you in those but that's what makes it hard when you have a microphone and you have a platform and you're talking to lots of people at the same time yeah some of the people need what you're saying yeah, yeah. it went rough and yeah. some people need it gentle yeah but you're spraying it all at the at people all at the once <laughs> I think too how do you how do you know Falcons what to game. say it's tough too I think that's why you have the body of Christ I think some people are built for certain types of ministry and certain types of settings but it all works together. Now we should be able to be versatile. I believe that, but yeah. some yeah. people are going to be—they're more gentle and they're temperate, so they might be able to talk to this certain group of people. Yeah. Some people, no matter how hard you try to be soft and gentle, yeah. it's, it's still going to come across like a brillo yeah. pad. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it just—if yeah. if that's your lane, you know. Yeah. But I think both still got to tell the truth, though. Everybody yeah. has to tell the truth. Yeah, the that's truth. Right. The that's truth true. can't be—you can't be passive with the truth. And another thing too is the Bible is offensive. It's offensive yeah. to us, and it's going to be offensive to non-believers. Yeah. So yeah. when people go in knowing that, then you'll be fine. So whatever approach you chose. Make sure the offense is yeah. the Bible and yeah. not you. Yeah. yeah. yeah, That's what it is. All right. The poll, Crispy put up a poll. Do you think Candace is right that folks are too coddled and sheltered from reality and need tough love? 46% said absolutely. 48% said it varies. 4% rarely. And 2% not really. Mm. 